Hello everyone, welcome back to the 0K 2019 1v1 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, and we are into round four. The maps are Aurelian, Gecko Isle, and Hide and Seek. We're starting out with Hyrule versus Catastrophe, and Hyrule has banned Aurelian. And we're going to be going with Gecko Isle. Reclaim territory! Actually, it's going to be interesting because Gecko Isle has a lot of reclaim, but sometimes people will send units to crush the reclaim first, so I'm curious if that, if that is what we're going to see. At any rate, we have Reclaim to work with, so this should be pretty cool. I think Hyrule so far is the player I've seen the least in this tournament. Like, Hyrule and Gaunson are players I'm not familiar with at all, but we've seen a fair bit of Gaunson. We haven't seen any... or we've seen, like, one small bit of Hyrule. Let's watch a full game of them. I'm curious how they play out. So here we are at Gecko Isle, having... Well... Yeah, so Reclaim is pretty heavy on this map. You got a lot of rocks all over the place. You got... Well, that's mainly what it is. Just rocks. Rocks everywhere. But the thing is, the rocks can be crushed, and they often are, but still, it's a lot you can reclaim. Usually players will, like, start out and then reclaim as they expand. Though, you can go for quick start, reclaim a bunch. You can also hold on, reclaim later in the game, so you end up having a relatively strong static economy as you're building up, and then later in the game when you need those bursts to get the heavy units, you then reclaim. That's another option, too. That happens as well. Looks like Hyrule going for the Shieldbot Factory. And Catastrophe is going for Cloakbot Factory. So, classic matchup. Cloakie versus Shield. I believe I believe Glaives and Bandits both can crush Reclaim. So I'm curious if we're going to see that. Let's begin. So Hyrule. Again, as mentioned, going for shield bots. Catastrophe the cloak bots. Catastrophe starting out with a glaive. Just for a bit of scouting. Whereas starting out with three bandits and no workers. Just just the bandits. Okay, cool. That's a thing you can do. You are perfectly allowed to do that. It's just a little bit unexpected. So the glaive coming in here will be what will it be doing? What will you do, Glaive? Eh, looks like it'll be fine. I mean, the Glaive's gonna be going from some scouting. Scouting on both sides. No real attempt to take out the me the metal, the reclaim. But actually, Catastrophe already going for it. Well, Hyrule has not, again, gotten any constructors of their own. They have a commander, but that's it. Going for a very quick outlaw, though. Extremely rapid riot defense, and I don't agree with this, considering the timing of it. Like, I get the idea, it's just that it's taken a while to actually build up. And as you can see, the Glaive already in the base, the commander doing a fine job defending against it, so it wasn't really that urgent of a thing. But there we go, it's, it's up, so at the very least, it'll make it harder for the use of imps to be effective for Catastrophe. I rule also making it a bit harder for Catastrophe to go for an expansion if they wanted to to the western side of the map. Oh, just checking for it, I thought they were actually going to place that there, hold it on. Actually, overall, Hyrule is... Being very proactive and seeing where Catastrophe is expanding. I don't know if they realize just how much Catastrophe is relying instead on the Reclaim. Although Catastrophe is going for the Western Expansion right after Hyrule decides to leave that bandit to its devices. Which is a bit of a shame. And the bandit... If the bandit had actually been hanging out there, would have been able to stop the expansion. I'm a little surprised that didn't happen. But at the same time, there are Glaives coming in here to try to help out. Because, as you can see, Catastrophe... Catastrophe has radar. Catastrophe knows that the bandits there. Actually, oh, if the bandit had stayed there, it would have been fine. Oof. Still, if the bandits regroup, Hyrule will be okay. And yeah, Hyrule with the micro advantage. Now, Hyrule's got this. Hyrule totally has this. Catastrophe realizing a little bit too late they've lost one of their bandits. Losing another bandit. Taking out a... Oh, sorry. Sorry, losing glaives, not bandits. Only one bandit down in the process, but with the Reaver out, there's no way for Hyrule to take out the Catastrophe's base. That being said, I rule with the reclaim. They are on it. Their commander actually is on it. 
which I like. I mean, use the commander, sit, get it set up. I'm a little surprised we aren't seeing any convicts. I'm really surprised we aren't seeing convicts, to be perfectly honest. I would have expected Hyrule would go for those immediately, but no, apparently they're using their commander entirely while being very aggressive otherwise. The outlaws already coming in here. Ronin are going to be fine dealing with them. I mean, the outlaws cannot really come close. They're on fight move, obviously, because... Yeah, that's what you do, just to avoid too much damage. But yeah, the Ronin, it's not going to work. The outlaws need to just back off. Even fight move isn't enough. Like, just get them out of there. Glaive's trying to come in and do something, but there's no rogues. Sorry, Glaive's bandits trying to do something, but there's no rogues to help them out. So I don't I don't see how this is going to work. The Reaver would take out the bandits. The outlaws cannot get to the Ronin. If the Reaver, if the bandits actually go around the other side, they would be able to take out some of the Ronin and force them to retreat. Which would help a little bit. It's not too much. I do like the use of this mountain, though. Just, yeah, keep the Ronin out of the way. <laughs> nice and clever. Just cover. I mean, that is a thing in this game. Obviously, you know, terrain does pr block projectiles, so you might as well use it as cover. Same time, the bandits are coming in here. I do not agree with this. Do not point move into a Reaver. These bandits are going to die a horrible death. However, they're also going to distract a couple of the Reavers, but yeah, like, line move. Hyrule, why are you not line moving? Okay, thank you. Thank you for line moving. It's not quite enough, but it might help. No, those those Reavers are going to completely destroy the bandits. However, the bandits, again, distracting the Reavers. Nice distraction plays. This is the second time we've seen this this tournament. Like, really strong distraction plays. Take out opponent's buildings. But the problem is, Reavers deal splash damage. Do not... Ugh! Hyrule, you could have won that exchange. I mean, not up the hill. That actually was suicide. But you could have won that exchange if you had just spread the bandits out more because Reavers are entirely splash-based. The bandits don't have to be adjacent to each other. Hyrule could have won... Actually, could have won the exchange in the flat ground. Like, they could have easily just taken it, gone this big circle around the Reavers. The Reavers would have been able to hit, like, one or two at a time. So, that's... Ah, that is a real shame. It's like, that was more than enough bandits if they had all attacked in a circle. If they had all been far enough away from each other, the splash damage to the Reaver didn't do anything. But that's what it is. Like, you've got to be really careful when it comes to fighting any kind of splash damage units that you don't get your units too close together. Now, this is fine. The shields are fine. The outlaws get close enough and the thugs are protected. Like, that works out okay. But with the bandits, no. They need to worry about spread. There's so much you can do with micro for spreading out raiders. If you line move properly, let's... And unfortunately, we did not see that. So that's putting Catastrophe way ahead. Actually, I think that gave Catastrophe the game, to be perfectly honest. I mean, Hyrule not expanding also has helped, and not building a lot of energy structures, and generally not getting their economy going into the late game. But if Hyrule was planning on going for a really early game rush strategy, they threw it away when they lost the bandits to all those Reavers. It would have been a better option to have them spread out, go around, maybe take out the Reavers from spreading out first. Now it's too late. It's way too late now. Like this, we're in the mid-game. We need rogues. Or felons. Felons work too. But yeah, that's that is what catastrophe needs right now. It's ways of dealing with all of this. All the stuff that Hyrule has built. And the hyper efficient way sorry, how's of catastrophe built and the hyper efficient way catastrophe ended up beating Hyrule's army. Now, Hyrule at least is expanding a little bit now. But unfortunately they still don't have any dead no convicts, really? They have no convicts. Okay. Cool. Cool. I, I would recommend convicts, but sure, if you don't want convicts, I guess I can't really say you... No, I should say... I can't say you should. You really should have convicts. That's extra shields for the felons. That's extra expansion. Extra reclaim on a map like this. It's extremely useful. I mean, Hyrule could theoretically get back into this game if they built, like, three convicts and had their commander, all of them, reclaim a bunch and then become... and win one good fight. They'd have the economy back on track. I mean, it's an option. The map does allow for it. But it's tricky, because Catastrophe is very much ahead. And they're not going to worry about any kind of production nexus anytime soon. They can reclaim all they want for the rest of the game with all these caretakers. And indeed, they're doing exactly that. Like, that's the thing, is that Catastrophe is doing exactly what I think Hyrule should do, putting Hyrule even further behind. But that's how it goes sometimes. So, considering that, it's going to be a really tricky situation.
So with that, yeah, Hyrule, their last stand, they're pushing, they're trying. And that is just the way things go. It's unfortunate for Catastrophe, but... Sorry, unfortunate for Hyrule. That's for Catastrophe. It's great for Catastrophe. Catastrophe, I'm sure, is having a great time. Having no problems whatsoever taking this match. And they're way ahead economically. They have all the expansions. They have a bunch of reclaim they're working with. They have all the caretakers they need in case they get more reclaim, which they're getting plenty of it because Hyrule never went around and smashed the reclaim rocks. And Hyrule has nothing to defend as Catastrophe is just bearing down on them with a giant wave of units while Hyrule goes over to the northwest and still has to deal with Catastrophe's defenses on top of having to deal with the fact that Catastrophe has decided now is the time for Hyrule to die. Well, have some chat, I guess. And there's... I mean, okay, the use of the shields for the Stardust, at the very least, there's something. Allowing the Felon to do, to do some work, get rid of the Stardust. It's not the best, since, well, Faradays are still Faradays and actually do a lot of damage to shields. As always, status effects deal their damage to... Like, deal a third of the status damage to shields as just straight damage. So they're very effective against getting rid of shields. When you're dealing with a unit like a felon that relies on shield power in order to act firepower, that becomes even more of a problem. And this is this is death, isn't it? Yeah, they managed to get out of the way in time. So Hyrule managing to get a little bit of damage on Catastrophe, taking out some of their economy, but at the same time, Catastrophe is still bearing down on Hyrule's base, and there's nothing Hyrule has to really deal with it. I mean, the felons will help, but again, Ronin can kind of just deal with the shields directly. Not have to worry about it too much. The assault force is going down. Hyrule not focusing on microing them in order to take out the rest of the expansions. And at the same time, we have Clays going around the back, because why not? There's no defenses here whatsoever. Hyrule trying to get a Sky Dust built up, and they will be able to get one to defend some of their expansion, but it's not enough. The Ronin are being forced back, but that's the same time that these thugs are being destroyed, so there's not much going on there. Hyrule, they're holding on remarkably well, considering the economic disadvantage and the fact that they are refusing to use rogues. I mean, they've decided felons are their skirmisher of choice. But it's just a matter of time. Largely, Catastrophe was distracted. They had half their army up in their own base and the other half of the army out in Hyrule's field. Well, now there's not a whole lot left. Catastrophe can basically attack from all sides. And Hyrule, realizing this, throws in the towel, and that is going to be game of Catastrophe taking it rather convincingly from the beginning. Ten and a half minutes in, and Gekka Wild belongs to Catastrophe. Are there any other matches? I don't... I don't know. I feel like there are. I feel like that was like the first one to go down. And people were recommending seeing King Kingstead and Saniac. Apparently that is really epic. That is... Still ongoing. Okay, cool. And it's also Gekka Wild, so I don't have to change anything on the map. Well, let's check that out, then. Fine, easier, right? We shall check out King's Dead versus Saniac. Okay. Now let's get going. King's Dead, Saniac, King's Dead, starting out in the top left, going for... <laughs> I want to say it's Cloaky. Oh, wow. Very quickly, Saniac tearing everyone apart with the commander. Okay. What? What? King's dead. Okay, Saniac went for the proxy gunship factory. King's dead went for the Cloakies. And now rebuilding with shields. And that's still alive, surprisingly enough. Well, King's, well I mean, King's dead is dead. It's dead, dead. But, okay. I'll take that. That was... That was pretty surprising, and hey, we had base trade. I mean, we had base invasion. Just saying, I went, nope, I'm taking your base, and King's dead just died, and we didn't get to see any of that because I was watching another game, which was a bit more evenly matched, but didn't have a crazy tactic like that. So, yeah. Good job, Saniac. Taking a match off King's dead. Cool. Okay, well, I think that... I don't think that's round three. I think there's still matches going on. There's at least one match going on, but... Eh. 
What do we have left? Oh, Gaunson and Dyth. Okay. Also on Gecko Wild. Might as well check that out, see what's going on. Oh, it was gnats. Okay, yeah, that explains it. King Stat in the chat pointing out it was a gnat locust invasion. Yeah, gnat locust is very scary. That that is absolutely true. You are right, King Stad. There's there's not much more to be said about that. Okay, so Gaunson going for Clokies and tanks are dice choice. Although, okay. Death going around a lot with with a lot of Kodachis and having a bit of a tough Okay, Kodachis into very quick Tremor. Sorry, very quick Emissary. And holding that center very str quite strongly. Gaunson able to push back with Ronin, but it's clear that the speed advantage is too much. Dyke, however, continues to run their forces into a increasing wall of Ronin, making the speed advantage far less effective. And there's the Tremor finally, but that's not quite doing enough. The Ronin are able to escape that. The Scythes are coming in as well, which should be able to take out a bunch of stuff in the back. Well, them along with Glaze. The Glaze don't manage to do much. Scythes, however, are going for it. Going over the back line, trying to take out the factory, and do manage, in fact, to do that. Getting rid of the tank factory. Not really getting rid of any of the caretakers, though. It's a little bit unfortunate, but hey, the caretakers, that's kind of the key thing. So the factory down is going to slow stuff down a little bit for Dyth. So the economic advantage is definitely in their favor. Gaunson, if Gaunson's able to take out the center expansion, they will have a bit of an advantage to work with. I've managed to at least hold on to their base, get their defenses pretty solid. I mean, the Tremor providing a lot of grief. I'm sending a lot of brawls, but hey, you know, Glaives can come in here and start dealing some damage. I don't see these Glaives actually doing all that much. The Kodachis are tearing them apart. The Tremors are or the, actually, not the Tremors, the Emissaries are tearing them apart, surprisingly enough. Wow. Not used to artillery in this game actually being that effective at leading shots, but apparently it is. The Glaives in the back lines have to deal with welders. That's the one thing about fighting tanks is that welders are a thing. The still Glaive DPS against Minotaur, providing a bit of defense. Though the Southwest Kodachis are raiding well enough. They've gotten scouting on the gunship plant. Though the Nats come in here, that actually could still work out. The Nats come in, deal some extra, or deal some stun. That opens things up for the Glaives. They, especially if they stun out... Well, I guess if they stun up the Emissaries, would be unlikely. The Emissaries being as far back in the back line as they are. Still, as that all said and done, finally a bit of quiet on the northern front here. Gaunson is actually pretty close economically. A little bit ahead in terms of energy. About even in terms of metal. And that's what Dice reclaiming. Glaives, however, have come up in... Or sorry, Gnats, however, have come up in force along with several Ronin. Allowing for the Tremor to actually be silenced. And that is going to open up a nice little Ronin assault here. Taking out that Tremor and from there, very likely... Ah, not quite. Unfortunately, the Emissaries are just too accurate. And that Tremor gets to live another day. Although, to be fair, there's still a heavily damaged Tremor in the front lines. There's still a lot to work with there. I just kind of wish that we'd see more than just the Gnats. I mean, a Locust or something coming in on top of that. That, I think, would do the trick. Now, get the Locusts in there. Get in the Tremors. Take, I mean, the Etans are still there, but the Etans are being, gla are being natted out as well. The Ogres are the main issue, and those are causing problems in the Nats on top of the Glaives. So unfortunately, not quite effective enough. Dyth also coming in here with Spider Factory, because why not? In fact, what is that Spider Factory primarily building? Redbacks? Redbacks and Recluses. Good choices for the Spider Factory. And Gaunson pretty much stuck on Glaive Gunship, which is fine depending on the units they go for, but it doesn't feel like Gaunson's really managing to get a whole lot of momentum here. I mean, again, economically they're doing fine, but Dyth, they're 10,000 metal ahead in terms of attrition. They have units all over the map. They're playing tanks, and once they get set up, it's very difficult to break down. And expansions are being torn apart left and right just because of how well Dyth is able to move their army around. I mean, Gaunce's commander taking some damage on top of that. 
The Glaives can't really do much next. The Ogre, actually, the com Gauntz's commander about to go down. Once that Minotaur gets one good shot in there, and there it is. Once the end's down, the Minotaur has clear fire. And although it does go down, it takes out the commander in the process, eliminating Gauntz's storage, a lot of Gauntz's economy. And with that, the towel has been thrown, and Gauntz's losing, I believe, another match. Have they won a single match in this tournament? I feel like they haven't won a single match. They have not won a single match in this tournament. So, unfortunate for Gaunson, they are still not doing so hot. But they had a relatively even match, though. I mean, okay, it was a lot of territory. I, even economically, like, metal income was pretty close. Well, actually, I say pretty close. We have this giant spike in the middle where dice are just taking everything. Okay, fair enough. It's not that close. It seemed like it was kind of close, but I guess it just wasn't. Gaunson had the overdrive advantage, but it didn't end up really working out. And 10,000 metal... Well, 10,000 produce difference for Dyth, 7,000 use difference, and Dyth never had a disadvantage of army value, so... Okay, yeah, the territory advantage really did make a huge difference. That's kind of what it comes down to. So now we're going to be moving on to round 5. Stay tuned for that, it'll be up in a couple minutes. The last round! I mean, tiebreakers will be likely because that's just how things go. But yeah, last round. Be back with that in a couple minutes. <laughs> 